The phone rang. Exhausted from last night's rampage, I must have fallen asleep. I woke up to the phone ringing and ran into the bathroom, stood on the toilet, and flipped open the phone tapped to the ceiling. It was Amy, and I feel so much better. She was really worried about me, and apparently had been trying to contact me since the last time I talked to her. She's coming over now, and yes, she knows where I am without me telling her. I feel <laughs> so embarrassed. I am definitely throwing this journal away before anyone sees it. I don't even know why I'm writing in it now. Maybe it's just because it's the only communication I've had at all since... God knows when. I look like hell, too. I looked in the mirror before I came back in here. My eyes are sunken, my stubble is thicker, and I just look generally unhealthy. My apartment is trashed, but I'm not going to clean it up. I think I need someone else to see what I've been through. These past few days have not been normal. I am not one to imagine things. I know I've been the victim of extreme probability. I probably missed seeing another person a dozen times. I just happened to go out when it was late at night or the middle of the day when everyone was gone. Everything is perfectly fine. I know this now. Plus, I found something in my closet last night that helped me tremendously. A television! I set it up just before this, and it's on in the background. Television has always been an escape for me, and it reminds me that there's a world beyond these stingy brick walls. I'm glad Amy's the only one that responded to me after last night's frantic pestering of everyone I could contact. She's been my best friend for years. She doesn't know it, but... I count the day that I met her among one of the few moments of true happiness in my life. I remember that warm summer day fondly. It seems a different reality from this dark, rainy, lonely place. I feel like I spent days sitting in that playground, much too old to play, just talking with her and hanging around doing nothing at all. I still feel like I can go back to that moment sometimes, and it reminds me that this damn place is not all that there is. Finally, a knock at the door. I thought it was odd that I couldn't see her through the camera I hid between the two soda machines. I figured it was bad positioning, like when I couldn't see out the front door. I should have known. I should have known. After the knock, I yelled through the door jokingly that I had a camera between the soda machines because I was embarrassed myself that I had taken this paranoia so far. After I did that, I saw her image walk to the camera and look down at it. She smiled and waved. Hey, she said to the camera brightly, giving it a weary look. It's weird, I know, I said to the mic attached to the computer. I've had a weird few days. Must have, she replied. Open the door, John. I hesitated. How could I be sure? Hey, humor me a second here, I told her through the mic. Tell me one thing about us. Just prove to me that you're you. She gave the camera a weird look. Um, alright, she said, slowly thinking. We met randomly at a playground when we were both way too old to be there. I sighed deeply as the reality returned and fear faded. God, I've been so ridiculous. Of course it was Amy. That day wasn't anywhere in the world except in my memory. I never even mentioned it to anyone, not out of embarrassment, but out of a strange nostalgia and a longing for those days to return. If there was some unknown force that worked trying to trick me, as I feared, there was no way they could have known about that day. Huh, alright. I'll explain everything. 
I told her. Be right there. I ran to the small bathroom and fixed my hair as best I could. I looked like hell, but she would understand. Snickering at my own unbelievable behavior and the mess I've made of the place, I walked to the door. I put my hand on the doorknob and gave the mess one last look. So ridiculous, I thought. My eyes traced over the half-eaten food lying on the ground, the overflowing trash bin, and the bed I tipped to the side looking for God knows what. I almost turned the door and opened it, but my eyes fell on one last thing. The old webcam, the one I used for that eerily vacant chat with my friend. Its silent black sphere lay haphazardly tossed to the side, its lens pointed at the table where this journal lay. An overwhelming terror took over me as I realized that if something could see through that camera, it would have seen that I just wrote about that day. I asked her for any one thing about us, and she chose the one thing in the world that I thought they or it didn't know, but it did. It did know. It could have been watching me this whole time. I didn't open the door. I screamed. I screamed in uncontrollable terror. I stomped on the old webcam on the floor. The door shook and the doorknob tried to turn, but I didn't hear Amy's voice through the door. Was the basement door made to keep out drafts too thick? Or was Amy not outside? What could have been trying to get in if not her? What the hell is out there? I saw her on my computer through the camera outside. I heard her on the speakers through the camera outside, but was it real? How could I know? She's gone now. I screamed and shouted for help. I piled up everything in my apartment against the front door.